Hi, hello, and welcome to Americana Station. I'm Emily Smith. I'll be hosting the show today. I'm filling in for Will in India. They're off doing cool rock star stuff like making albums, playing shows, and I'm an unemployed podcast host who needed something to do. I'm a fan of this podcast, so when Will asked, of course, I wanted to jump in and do it. Go get yourself subscribed on Apple Podcasts. Be sure you're following along on social media so you never miss an episode. This is a really cool show. If you listened to last episode, you already know me. I interviewed Mercy Bell. If you haven't checked it out yet, go do that now. Today, I'm interviewing another artist I'm a big fan of. His name is Ben Stolitz. He's out of Toledo, Ohio, and his new album, Everybody's Laughing, is out now. I'm a big fan of lyrics, and Ben Stolitz has some really good ones. We'll talk about him throughout the interview, but he nails that kind of dark with a sense of humor, and he just seems like a cool guy. We'll talk about BMX biking, hot dogs, and a lot more in this interview, so I hope you'll stick around. I mentioned I'm Emily. I used to host a podcast called The Alt Country Show for like 15 years. The company I worked for went out of business just a few months ago. I hope to be bringing that podcast back. But in the meantime, I'm so excited to be hosting Americana Station. So big thanks to Will in India. Let's get into the interview. Here with Ben Stolitz, and we are going to be chatting about his new album, Everybody is Laughing, which dropped in August. And I know you're super excited about that, but I follow you on social media. And I have other questions first, if that's okay. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I know you're proud of this album, but... I saw that you're really proud of this hot dog bun that you signed. And I am curious about that. What is going on with that? Um, so Tony Paco's is a legendary establishment here in Toledo. And uh, I guess the way I could explain how important me signing that bun is would be I could get the lucky break of winding up on like a show like David Letterman or something like that at rest in peace, that show. Uh, and the people around here wouldn't give half as much credit to that as they would to me signing the hot dog bun. Okay. So what, how do you get to sign the bun? Well, um, I, I actually just asked my publicist to get a hold of them. And uh, a few weeks later, I'm signing the bun. So really, there, there's a chance that they might have just opened the door for me if I just was like, hey, can I sign a bun? They're like, sure. Who are you? But, yeah. but that's... That's besides the point. The point they, is, is I signed the bun. And do they display that? Yeah. Hopefully mine will be right next to Rudolph Giuliani's. Oh, wow. That's exciting. <laughs> <laughs> Something else I noticed that you're very talented at is BMX biking. And do you uh, work at a bike shop? Um, I used to. I okay. worked at a bike shop for like 10 years. Okay. And so is that something you've done since you were a kid? Yeah, I've, rode, I've rode BMX uh since I was uh, like 10, um, but I stopped riding for almost the last decade uh, because of injuries. And also I really wanted to focus on being a good songwriter. And I thought you couldn't do both, but I was wrong. You can you do both. Wrong. You're so good at the BMX biking. I'm always impressed when you post your videos. So uh, y'all should go follow him on social media. You can see the hot dog and you can see the BMX videos, which are pretty cool. You can see um, the hot dog and you can see me hot dogging. Yeah, exactly. And and you're very good with puns. One of my, uh, in, in some of your songs, I have, well, we'll get to that in a minute. I have a few favorites in, in some of your songs. And um, one thing I read in one interview that you had said that even though you've written albums before, this is kind of like your first one. Yeah. Um, why is that? And where do you think you're at? Like musically, I've always like one of my favorite things and why I've followed indie artists for so long is I like watching the growth of artists, you know, and I just think that's cool that you feel like you're kind of coming into your own now. Yeah, uh, I've, that is such a you're very good at interviews. And I appreciate this. Sometimes I talk to people and it seems like they don't need, don't know me from Adam. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I do feel very much like this. Uh, this album is my first album I put out. Uh, because it's the first time, like, I think that every, at least like in things that I've read, every good songwriter seems to have like a, a moment of reckoning where they kind of like, like, Oh, okay. This is my voice. Cause you know, you get inspired by all these people 
and you know what you want to sound like, you know what you want to go for, but really everything else is just like, it's, it's really muddy until all of a sudden like you adjust all the levels and you're finally just kind of like, you filter everything through your own voice. And anyways, long story short, I feel like this album was the first, first real taste of that for me. Like, uh, it's like my personality, you know, before I used to want to sound like I was somebody I wasn't like, I want to sound like I was some sort of genius, some sort of a uh, poet. And I'm none of those things. I'm just Ben and I'm a songwriter and I, I have some funny moments and some sad moments. And I think I get them all. I get them all out in those songs and I get them all out in general now. I think you really did. Cause prior to the interview, you know, I've listened to your album quite a bit. Um, when Will asked me to fill in, he gave me a list of artists and said, these are some of the ones that I was looking at doing. Who do you want to do? And I was like, immediately wanted to do you because I've listened to your album and I feel like I know you from the album. So that was kind of like intimidating when I was going to interview you. Cause it's like weird. I feel like I know so much about you and you know, like nothing about me. So that's always like I know a little bit about you. A little bit. A little I know bit. your former employer. Yeah, my former employer. I was going to ask you about that. How did you get hooked up with my former employer? Like, um, and Brian and all that. With, yeah, with, yeah, here Brian, and there. So I have this friend, uh, Brett Saxon. Shout out, Brett Saxon. Um, he uh, used to help me out with shows in New York when he lived there. He doesn't live there anymore, at least I don't think. He's kind of all over the place. Um, but he's like, I got a show there. I'm like, Hey, do you know anybody? Like I was trying to find some press and he just was so gracious. He was not a gatekeeper is the word I now know to be. He was not a gatekeeper. So he's just like, yeah, I know somebody that I could hook you up with to get you some press. And he introduced me to Brian and, uh, Brian and I, honestly, it was a really fun video shoot. I can't remember the name of the bar that we were at. Oh man. Anyways, it was like a quick shoot. It's really early in the morning. It's right before I moved uh, my girlfriend back to uh, Toledo. So I was hungover and I had a really long drive ahead of me and I woke up really early and it just was a really kismet uh, situation. That's awesome. I love Brian. And we're talking about Brian Bruckman for those of you that aren't familiar. And Brian and I used to work together until just recently. Um, Hopefully we'll be coming back and doing something again together soon. Because something that was really special where I worked was we were all so passionate about doing things like what you said, hooking up with our friends, finding out about new artists. A lot of the artists I found were all organic, not through publicists necessarily. So um, I always loved that part of it. And I hope we get to keep doing it in some way. Yeah. And that video, like, honestly, like that video afforded me the opportunity to play shows that I otherwise might not have gotten to play. Like it was really, it was really good for me. And honestly, I hope that you guys uh, uh, work something out to where that you guys can do this again. Cause I need the help. Okay. Well, we'll definitely, <laughs> I, I know we're going to be back in some way. I'll bring back my alt country show. It's coming back in some way, which um, I was stoked. I got to premiere a video for you for chicken flew the coop, which yeah. um, was a fun video just because all I, all I told my, uh, listeners was there's a chicken man which i think is like (laughs) you have to go watch it after that right (laughs) right can you tell me a little bit about that song and the process of making it yeah i'll tell you about the song but the video i have next to nothing to do with this is is a guy named marco north and he uh he really took the reins with it. he's just like i heard this song and i'm seeing a chicken man walking around i'm like Say no more. Say, Say less. Say no more. Yes. <laughs> and, uh, and he and he took it, and he's like, the only thing he he sent us he sent us a uh, like a taste of it. He's like, I think I finally got this part right, and I'm like, yeah, you got it right. Yeah, you did. <laughs> I, I, didn't know, I didn't know what what could be wrong. I didn't know yeah. what could be wrong. He he killed it. A lot of people really like uh, that video. That have seen it, they've been like, Ben, that's so. I'm like, I wish I had something to do with it, but I didn't. And I love super cool. Yeah. And as far as the song goes, that's like the only um, song that isn't autobiographical, I think, on the record, if I'm thinking correctly. Uh, I don't know. I just thought uh, I thought that I was writing too much about uh, myself. So I wanted to try to um, make up a a story that might relate. And I kind of got into like the pretending I was like, a little bit of a preacher mindset. So I, 
I thought what better than to be to write about uh, um, maybe a misfortune that somebody experienced in the church setting. I like that. Um, where's your preferred place to send listeners to go listen to this track? Um, pro- pro- probably Spotify. I mean, Spotify. or you can watch a video on YouTube. Okay. I, honestly, anywhere. I'm not. I'm not going to strike it rich. Uh, just- <laughs> Just yet. So just as long as you listen to me at all, I'm just really grateful for it. All right. So I want to tell everybody, go check out the video. So go to YouTube, uh, Chicken Flew the Coop with Ben Stalitz. You guys can Google it, I assume, and find that. <laughs> <laughs> I talked before about your puns, and one of my favorite tracks from the album has a pun, which I wrote down and cannot find. It's sitting here somewhere. I wanted to read it exactly. It was from your track, EGBA, or Everything's Going to Be All Right. Oh yeah. I think I know what you're thinking. I mean, the whole thing is like, there's a lot going on with the Adam got so annoyed by Eve. She would never pick a place to eat. And so she chose Applebee's just (laughs) to flirt with the snake in the weeds (laughs) for anyone that's been a server in the weeds. I was just like, okay, there's a lot going on here and I love all of it. And I also, (laughs) I worked at Applebee's for like five years, which also drew me into this. (laughs) But how did that, I, I just, I find that lyric interesting. How did that come into your brain? I, to be honest with you, that song's probably at this point, like uh, three years or plus old. Um, but I remember when I wrote that line, I was playing, I, at first I didn't stick to Applebee's. At first I wrote Apple Trees <laughs> yeah. uh, because I, I, but then I had, I had them both written down and I actually showed uh so first I wrote that line and I was talking to uh, my girlfriend about it and I thought she thought it was good. We like, I, we like joked back and forth about it until I kind of had it fleshed out and she thought it was good too. And like, she felt it. And then, so I still didn't have decide between apple trees and apple bees, but I recorded a demo where I said apple trees and um, I sent it to uh, Bunky, my producer. And he, he's like, man, I think you should use the Applebee's. He's like, I don't know if there's any like copyright or anything that we need to worry about, but I'll pay it. I think the line's way better. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I sold after that. And I mean, honestly, I, lo- I love that song so much. Cause I think that, uh, you know, it's pretty lighthearted in a sense, but it's, uh, it's, it's like nothing in the song is all right. But yet I keep repeating, everything's going to be all right, which is honestly like my mantra for life. I think. Yeah. I feel like after I listened to it a few times, it kind of became my mantra too. Like over the (laughs) next, no, like seriously, over the next few days, I had that chorus in my head and I was like, oh, this is nice. So (laughs) anyway, I really love that song. You just mentioned Bunky Hunt, your producer. Uh, How'd you get hooked up with him? Is he local to Toledo as well? Nope. He's a, he's a Detroit guy and he, um, he came out uh, through a mutual friend of ours, John Freeman. I think we were playing a show together. It's either Freeman and I or Don Dupree and I, and uh, Bunky was at a show. Uh, I think we might have chatted just a smidge, but he reached out to me and he's like, hey, um, I sometimes have house concerts and, you know, maybe you can play one of those and we'll get you some money. And I I love playing house shows. So I was like, yeah, of course. And the house show just never panned out, but we've kept in contact and I don't even know how it happened, but it just like organically is like, hey, like I'm a... I'm a, I've been producing, I started a small record label and why don't you come up to Detroit and we can record some demos and kind of see if we would be a good fit for each other. And yeah, that's what Okay. Happened. So that's whistle pig records. Whistle pig, Bunky, yeah. Bunky started that. Yeah. That's all Bunky. Okay, cool. I've been checking out some of the artists and I yeah. like what they're doing. So yeah. that's exciting. Bunky's got a good ear. That's really cool. I was going to talk about kind of the range of emotions throughout your album. And you mentioned before how, you know, you are a bunch of different things. You're funny, you're sad, you're this, you're that. I think that's very captured throughout the album. Was that range of emotions something you set out to capture or did that just happen naturally? I feel like there's a bit of a theme, even though there's not a set theme, but like, you know, just that like, uh, juxtaposition of emotions kind of runs throughout it. Was that something you meant to capture or just? I think came? you're right. I think you're right about um, there being a theme. And it's funny because I didn't really recognize it until we were starting to do the uh, the promo for this. I was like, 
I, I'd started to notice the theme and, uh, and I don't have like a firm grasp on what exactly you want to call the theme, but, uh, I did know when making this album, I thought it would be best. I thought like my, my mindset at the time was that, um, to not sound preachy when you're trying to make, uh, uh, an example of, or a point, um, is to use yourself as the example, uh, because, you know, if it is my wrongdoing, then like, how could I be being too preachy to you? That was my thought process at the time. And, uh, so, so I offered myself up as an example of like what not to do in a bunch of different songs. And I felt like that's, if, if nothing else, that's kind of the theme of the record. And I did set out to capture, um, a bunch of different emotions, quite honestly. Like I wanted every song to sound totally different. I wanted there to be different drums, different vibes. Like there's a song in there called No Right Way, which I think has a, a very Latin uh, like drum feel. And it's uh, very cool in that regard. And I mean, EGBA, the drums on that are like, a, I don't even know. I, I just, I wanted all the drums to be different on every song. I didn't want it to sound like, Honestly, I didn't want it to sound like an alt country record. Uh, yeah. I wanted it to sound like like just everything. Yeah, I think if you played pretty much any of the tracks individually, there it's like spans all different genres. It's yeah. really cool. The title track from the album, which is the last track on the album, is another one of my favorites, and I felt like that one was completely different than everything else. Almost kind of like a, I don't know, like a poppy like. British pop. I don't know. Like I, I don't, I'm not really great at describing like music, but, um, Oh, that's fair. I, I like that. Yeah. Um, I just really liked that song and, and the lyric from it. Everyone is laughing. I'll have what they're having. Yeah. And I just feel like that was just really powerful in like, you know, a um, kind of depressing kind of way. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's super depressing, but, but like it's, it's, I mean, my thought was just like, well, all right. You probably know, like I've said it before, uh, is based on a Mark Twain quote, which is the secret source of uh, laughter is not joy, but sorrow. There is no laughter in heaven, which made me think like the reason we're all laughing is that we're all sad. And if we're all sad, maybe we just don't have to be alone. You know, maybe that'll make us just a little bit less sad. Just take the edge off if we are aware of that. And I'm not sure if I totally agree with that or not, but that's how the song, that's what I thought when I wrote the song. I feel like that is like a very unifying theme and, uh, or, or like the quote and the saying, it's like, we're all kind of in this together. And yeah, I like that. I read that quote too, in one of your interviews that you had said that that was one of your inspirations. So you made this record during COVID, but you had started it quite a bit before COVID. Yeah. Yeah. How did you feel working during this time? I know some people were really like thriving and others were like, just, this is like, I can't get anything out. How was it for you? Well, um, so like you said, we'd been working out for a while beforehand. We've been taking our time with it. Um, Detroit is an hour away from Toledo. So every time I would go to record, I'd drive an hour there, an hour back, which is really no big feat. But um, um we were probably, I'd say like 75, 80% done once COVID hit. And then we took us, we were at a standstill for months when I felt like the end should have, we would have probably already reached the end. Um, so we took like, I, I don't know, maybe three or four trips to Detroit during COVID to finally knock it out. And um, so, but that, that's just the album. As far as like getting work done, like I, I, my, my main thing is I'm a songwriter and, um, I, COVID didn't do anything for my songwriting. Uh, it didn't affect it. Like I just write all the time, whether that's good stuff or bad stuff, that's neither here nor there. I'm just always writing. Um, so, so I, I was always working at just as far as what I was working on, that was different. I didn't get to finish the album when I wanted to, but it worked out for the better, I think. And how are you, uh, have you been performing or have you done any shows? What's that looking like for you as like, um, going on here? Um, well, that's the other thing about COVID. I felt like it, it put all of us on a level playing field, you know, all like the, the superstars all the way down to old Benny. 
Uh, we're like, we're on the, you know, we're all performing online. We're all like, like what else is there to do? It's dangerous. Um, now, now it seems like we're, uh, people are going back out there and playing and there's a lot of safety precautions that are instilled. Like I know, um, you know, Jason Isabel has been a huge proponent of the vaccination and the proof of vaccination and the, uh, wearing a mask, just he's taking, uh, a lot of precautions which i think is so amazing but what sucks is is at that level you can do it but i feel like at the level we're at it's a little little bit more tricky because like sometimes it's hard to just get a bar to book you you know they're doing right. you a favor and if they don't want to take the precautions what are you going to do so i'm not playing much is the long-winded answer to what you asked me but i did have a cd release show uh here in toledo we did it outside we encouraged everybody to have like to not come if they don't have a vaccination or to wear a mask. And uh, as far as I know, n- nobody got COVID. It was a really, really great day. It felt like a really an amazing celebration. Um, other than that, I just try to stay outside. I played a show in Cleveland uh, two nights ago that was indoors, a small little environment, but uh, it felt like everybody there was playing it safe too. As, yeah. as safe as you can. But I, I can't, see- I can't like, and I can't force, I have no, uh, you know, I have no leverage. It's, yeah, it's, it's really difficult. Like I go out to shows all the time and I just feel like most of the venues for like the acts that I normally go to see aren't enforcing a lot of things. Like I've gone out, I've done, I do the outdoor shows and I've gone to a few indoor things and I walk in and like, nobody's wearing masks and I know they're not checking vaccination cards and I'm just paranoid. And it's not even so much about me. It's like, I don't want to spread it to other people. Right, right. And I don't know. So that freaks me out. But I did go to like a really big show um, two weekends ago. I went and saw Waxahachie and Katie Kirby. And it was nice. indoors, masked. And they did, you had to have your vaccination card and everything at the door. Um, I I'm still that. paranoid. But I mean, yeah, they did it true. the best way possible. Yeah. And I haven't heard anything bad out of it. But like you said, like a lot of the artists don't have the pull and you got to make money and you got to get the word out there. I couldn't imagine writing this album and like not being able to go perform it. That must be yeah. incredibly hard. Yeah. My, my favorite thing in the world, like I love writing the songs. Like that's what I think I'm good at, but my favorite thing to do is perform them. Like I really enjoy, you know, getting involved, getting dirty, getting my hands dirty with people, you know? Yeah. I bet I'd love to come see you. I bet you're very good at that. Just based on the little bit I know. Thank I feel you like so it would be a good time. Um, what is, you say you're always writing. So are there, I mean, you just put out a record. I'm not saying get those singles out there, but like, is there, you know, work coming out that's like maybe on the horizon for you? Uh, yeah. Bunky and I were just talking about uh, what we're going to do next. Uh, there's like a few ideas floating around. One is recording um, singles, which I think that we should definitely do that or we will definitely do that. But uh, we talked about doing a records, uh, an album for record store day, like a, a, a just like a two side did vinyl and, um, and doing like one side, a cover of a Willie Nelson song and one side, a cover of, or a cover of an old song of mine and calling it uh, one for Benny, one for Willie, which is kind of a nod to a thing that Willie Nelson did for, uh, well, for a few different people for lefty for Zelda is what I was thinking. Um, And then I have, I just sent Bunky about 20 demos of probably 30 that I've written in the last uh, seven months or so. And I'm hoping that we have 10 good ones, really good ones for the next album. I've got, I've, uh, we've both been kind of hammering out details as far as like the sonic direction we want to go for that. That's exciting. Yeah. Um, so I will tell everybody again, it's Ben Stalitz. You can Google, go find the website, go find Twitter, Instagram. I think you're a lot of fun to follow. You're pretty yeah, funny. You. Um, and is there anything else like that you want to talk about or plug that you have upcoming or how can people support you other than buying the music? I always tell people to buy the music and then stream it too. Yeah. Um, honestly, anything online is like such a huge support. Like, following me on Instagram, like you said, or on Facebook or on Twitter, 
Um, Because right now, obviously, I'm not touring. Hopefully, maybe the beginning of next year will look different in that regard. Um, But but yeah, like if I could let you know about a show and then you'd actually come, that would be so amazing. Like that's huge. People don't understand. Like like you can make a living touring and playing to like really small rooms if if people care about your music and come like one person makes a difference. Um, so anyways, yeah, keeping in touch with me in any regard, like I would literally just give you the CD if you just wanted to check it out, you know, like I don't, it's not about money at this point. Hopefully later I can make some money, but right now it's just about listenership. Awesome. Well, thank you for letting me interview you and, uh, hopefully we get to work together again in the future. Absolutely. I don't see why we wouldn't. Okay. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> um, you're in New York, right? I am not. I am Where's in that? Tulsa, Oklahoma. You're in Tulsa? I figured I am. Your old your former employee, I thought it was all New York. Yes. Well, so in the very very beginning, so I started there in 2006. I was in Gainesville, Florida. I was in college at the University of Florida. And at that time, um the the kind of concept was to have uh hosts all over the world. So we had like a girl in Russia, we had a guy from Australia, we had a girl in Canada. And then um, it kind of got smaller and everybody kind of went to New York. And now, you know, with the digital stuff, we all kind of started expanding. I moved to Tulsa with my husband. Oh, cool. I love Tulsa, by the way. Oh, my gosh. I love it here so much. I never thought I would live in Oklahoma, like of all places. But Tulsa's got like the coolest music scene. Fuck yeah. You guys have, have the Woody Guthrie Museum. We have the Woody Guthrie Museum. We're about to open the Bob Dylan Center, which has um, hundreds of thousands of Bob Dylan's artifacts. Um, they're opening like a pop museum here. But like aside from that, the community is like so insanely supportive of local music. Um, there's all these like grants. Um, basically, they say if you want to make music full time in Tulsa, you should be able to and you should be able to live. Yeah, like the venues here get money from the city to pay the artists. And I'm talking local artists that play there every week. They're getting paid pretty well. And, you know, a lot of the venues are selling the people's merch and things like that. It's really cool. It's a really cool music community. Yeah. Yeah, I love Tulsa. So anyways, my my point is I thought you're New York, but either way, we'll cross paths uh, yeah. for sure soon. Next yeah. year. I don't see why not. I would love that. I'm not an epidemiologist, but I don't see why not. Okay. I hope that happens. <laughs> Thank you so much for taking the time uh, to talk to me about my album. It means the world to me. I love it. Of course. Of course. Thank you guys so much once again for hanging out with me today. I am Emily Smith. You're tuned in to Americana Station. Go subscribe to this show. Go follow it on Twitter. I think that's like the coolest place to follow musicians or podcasts. You see a lot of interaction. You get to interact with other fans and with the hosts or the artists themselves. And be sure to subscribe to the show on Apple Podcasts. That way you never miss an episode. Thanks again, guys, for hanging out with me today. And I hope to see you back here again. Tell Will and India that you enjoyed hanging out with me and you want me to host more shows. I'll see you guys next time.